Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial on creating normal maps for pixel art. First, a quick explanation of the different kinds of images we can use in game graphics. First, we have a colour map. This is just a normal colour image like a photograph. Then we have an albedo map. This is a colour image without any lighting, so no shadows or highlights. Then we have normal maps. Normal maps are images where each pixel represents a surface direction. Then we have height maps, sometimes called depth maps. These are images where each pixel represents a height. And then we have specular maps. Specular maps are images defining how shiny each pixel is. There are many other image formats like occlusion maps, emission, metalness, roughness, etc. But we won't be looking at those now. Normal maps main use in games is for affecting the way an object is lit to fake surface details. Although primarily used in 3D games, they can also be used in 2D games to simulate 3D surfaces. Bear in mind that normal maps are best used in games where you have dynamic moving lights, but can be used without them. There are five main methods that I know of for creating normal maps. One, converting a height map into a normal map. Two, processing several images lit from different directions. Three, generating from shape. Four, hand drawing the normal map. And five, baking them from a 3D program. I'll go over them briefly now. So, we'll start with converting a height map into a normal map. There are several programs that will generate a normal map from a height map, such as XNormal, Crazy Bump, The Excellent Materialize, just to name a few, all of which work very well for large textures, but these conversions don't work well at all for pixel art. To understand why, let's see how this conversion works. Here we see a little 4 pixel slice through our Apple stalk. We have the colour pixels, the height pixels, and what we want our normal pixels to look like. In the height map, each pixel represents a height, and in our normal map, each pixel represents a surface angle. Let's have a little think about one of these pixels, this red pixel here. So here we can see that pixel's colour, its height value, and what we want our normal value to look like. Now hopefully you can see here there is no way we can turn this single height value into an, ang an angle. We have no way of knowing what angle this pixel is meant to be. The colour doesn't tell us anything either. So how do these conversion programs take this height map pixel and convert it into a normal pixel? All these programs can do is guess based upon the neighbouring pixels what the normals might be. For large structures this actually works quite well but when you have fine detail like that you get in pixel art it tends to make smooth blobby normals. Also it's worth mentioning that it's actually quite difficult to draw depth maps accurately especially when it comes to slopes and curves. There is another process that I strongly recommend against using and that's generating a height map from a colour map. This, depending on the image, is a really bad idea. This is because, in general, the colour of the pixels in an image has nothing to do with the height. Look at this checkered ball example. When we generate a normal map from this image, we get this result. But if this is meant to be a sphere, what we really wanted is this result. So, I'll show the process briefly. I'll be using this little test pixel art to demonstrate the process. It's got like a, a blob of rocky blobs, let's say, some kind of metal grill, a crystal shape, and maybe some kind of space helmet. So for the height map method, we want to draw pixels for every pixel in the image, and we want to use brighter pixels to represent higher pixels in the height map. 
So you will end up with an image something like this. If you wondered what I was talking about when saying that drawing slopes and curves was difficult in a height map, getting these colours on this crystal face to be the right angle is really kind of guesswork and quite difficult to get right. And here's the result of sending that height map into one of those programs to convert. You can see that the blobby rocks have come out quite well, but the vent and the crystal are not very well defined and a bit soft and blobby looking. And it's had a real problem trying to do that space helmet bubble. Next, we'll have a look at using several lit images to create a normal map. If you take your pixel image and draw four different images that simulate the pixels being lit from the top, the bottom and the left and the right, you can use that to create a normal map. Here are the four images I drew for that particular pixel art. From the top, from the bottom, from the left and the right. You can see that, for example, this crystal face is lit up from the left hand side, but not from the right, top or bottom. As you can imagine, this is quite a time-consuming operation and again some of these can be quite difficult to draw. There is some pay for software that will do this process for you automatically but I thought it would be nice to show you doing it in the free program Krita. So I have my four images loaded in and I also have a little normal map reference images I created in uh, Blender. Just for a little bit more information about how a normal map works, if we go to the channels, we can have a look at the red and green channel separately. If we look at the red channel, the red channel stores the horizontal angle information. So if we look at, uh, let's say, the circle, on the right, it's bright white, and white represents an angle pointing directly to the right. And black, as we see on the other side, represents the angle pointing directly to the left. Similarly, on the green channel, this represents vertical information. So on the top of our circle, we have white, which represents a angle pointing straight up, and black at the bottom of it is an angle pointing straight down. So let's manually combine these four images into one normal map. Underneath our top image, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill this with a very specific colour. The colour is red 128, green 128 and blue 255. This represents a flat surface in a normal map with no angle. So I'm just going to fill with foreground colour. And if I hide this top layer, there's our starting point. Then, for this top image, we need to uh, adjust the brightness so that the black is middle grey. To do this, we'll use a levels adjustment and take our output levels up to 128. There we go. Next, let's take our bottom image select it all, copy it and paste it on top of our top image. So again we'll adjust this layers levels so that the lower output level is 128 and then for the underneath we need to invert this layer. Then just change this layer to overlay and we have our vertical representation. I'm going to flatten this layer down and move on to the horizontal information. So we'll find our left image and copy that on top of our top image. So again we'll adjust the levels to 128 and as this is from the left we'll need to invert it. And we get our right image, copy it, paste it on top, adjust its levels, and change its blending mode to overlay. 
and we can flatten that down as well. So now we have our base, flat normal, a horizontal, and a vertical. So if I just disable that, we go back to the vertical layer, and now we need to change the blending mode of this layer to copy green, green being vertical in a normal map. Then we'll re-enable our horizontal layer and change this to copy red. There we go, we've made a normal map. As you can see, this is a much cleaner image than our height map conversion, although it did take quite a bit of work to make. Next, we'll have a very quick look at generating normal maps from the shape of a sprite using the sprite's alpha. This is a process that uses the shape of the sprite to guess the internal normal map shape. It tends to make very, very blobby shapes, so it isn't really that appropriate for pixel art. But for completeness sake, I thought I'd just quickly show you it here again in Krita. So I've got a little blobby shape I want to make a normal map for, and we'll be using a special GMIC filter for this. So we'll start GMIC, and here it is already selected. It's called Illuminate 2D Shape. And the settings that you need to set this to are input type of single opaque shapes over transparency, output type normal map, set the guide color to black, and then you can just tweak these settings to get the kind of shape you want. Like if I was to increase the bump map, you'd get a much stronger bump map. Or you can smooth it out by increasing the smoothness. But if you do it too much, you'll lose smaller shapes. In fact, that's still too smooth. Let's smooth that down a bit more. There we go. So again, press apply. Okay, and we've created a normal map. So far, the other processes I've mentioned don't give us a great deal of control over each pixel of the finished normal map. Drawing the normal map by hand, on the other hand, gives us total control over each pixel, just like drawing the colors of the pixel art. You can use any paint program to make them, and the process is actually quite simple. All you do is you have a reference image like this one here, which I'll provide, and the link will be in the, in the description. And you use that to sample the colors for the correct direction of each pixel you want. So, for our little piece of test pixel art here, I'll create a new layer, and then for the pixel I'm choosing to paint in the normal map, I'll choose the correct color from the reference image to fill in that pixel. As you can see, this isn't too bad a process. Oh, I think I missed that pixel there, that's better. There we go, there's our little space helmet done. And after a few more minutes, there's our little crystal and our little plate done. Notice I didn't do the blobby rock things. It's just not the best process to use for that kind of organic, rocky shape. So I'll leave it for these three parts. One thing to note when hand drawing normal maps like this is that you shouldn't use any kind of image processing like blur as they won't respect the normal length and they'll get corrupted. Also, don't be tempted to scale or rotate any parts of the normal map, as it will corrupt the normal direction. This, I think, is one of the better ways to create normal maps, but again, it's still quite time consuming. The final way I'll show you how to create normal maps is using a 3D program like Blender this is the most accurate way I know of creating normal maps and will produce the best results, but it's also the most time consuming. It's accurate because it's the only method where you're not guessing the surface angles, as you'll be making the surface angles correctly in the 3D program. In this example, we have our image loaded onto a 3D model. If I change to a solid view, 
you can see that I've actually modeled the shape of all the pixels in the 3D model. Then all you need to do is use traditional 3D baking to create the normal map from this. Here's the result I get from Blender baking. Very good! The last thing I'd like to show you is the fact that you can combine several of these different techniques together. I often find that is the best way to work and certain aspects I'll do hand painted and other I may use the height map or the 3D baking technique. Combining these two images together is easy in this case because these parts of the normal map don't overlap so doing it in a standard paint package is easy just mask out one area and paste it into the other. If on the other hand you have two normal maps that you want to combine which overlap like these two images you'll have to use a program to combine them. I use a program I created myself which I'll give away for free link should be in the description or you can find other ones online. With this program I press load on image 1 and load normal map 2. It has a button to check for errors in the normal map. You can see that these two do have small amounts of errors and to correct those you just click the normalize button. So I did on that one and that one. If I now show errors there are none. The errors are just normals that aren't quite actually normal. And then there's three methods to combine them, but the best one is this angular method. If you press that button, you'll see it combines the two nicely, and then you can just press the save and save out the combined image. There we go. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Bye.